Would you like insurance? Yeah, you better give me the insurance because I am going to beat the hell out of this one. <laughs> Hey y'all, thanks for checking out Euclid Mining. So today I'm working on my KS0 Pro. Mainly I'm working on the firmware. Right now I'm running T-Swift and it's running you know, pretty solid. I haven't had any real issues with it. Um, I've downloaded the 280 version and I'm running around 290. So it's running pretty well, but I really want to get into fine tuning and maybe even pushing this miner a little bit further. And to do that, I need a new firmware. And that firmware allows me to control the megahertz and the voltage. And with that, I can push it above the 200 range and also perhaps bring down the voltage a little bit, saving me a little money, putting some more money back in my pocket. So I'm going to play around with that. Now, if you are to try any of these things, I recommend doing a lot more research before you just try it. Know your miner is different than my miner. And what I do to mine could be completely different for yours. You could just completely destroy your miner. So be careful before you do anything. Make sure you have the proper equipment as well with an upgraded power supply and so on and so forth. All right, some other things I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding these little heat sinks inside. There's four MOSFET chips, so I'm going to be putting these four heat sinks in there to try to help cool that a little more. Also, when I opened the miner up before to add those Noctua fans that I tried, well, they didn't really work out because the only thing I could do was have them on at full speed and they certainly blew enough air through it, but it was uh, it was just so loud, uh, it was I couldn't keep it the way it was. So what I did was I bought these little toggle switches that I can uh, connect in and hopefully control the speed of the fan. So we're going to revisit the Noctua fans and see if I can get them working. Um, that's it. Let's hop over. I'll show you what I'm working on. All right, so I got it open. I just thought I'd show it to you. So the top plate, you can see where I've had to piecemeal this thing back together. It's even falling apart now where I'm trying to show you. It's, uh, yeah, it's in pretty bad shape. So that needs to be redone. Also inside, I want to go ahead and clean the, uh, the two bars here and here where there's still some um, residue left. And as far as it goes for where I'm going to be putting these little uh, mini heat sinks that I was showing you earlier, these little ones, they're going to be going on these four chips, not the top ones here, the big ones, but the ones just below these, these four little ones right here, one, two, three, four on the bottom right there. So that's where those heat sinks are going to go. They're going to help cool that. And then, like I said, with the new thermal pads, that's going to help with the cooling there. And then next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, start working on some fans and see where we get with those. So let's give that a shot and I'll be back. I'll show you when we're all done. All right, got that nice and clean, as you can see. Looks pretty good. Got everything cleaned off. Uh, it's pretty shiny. Uh, took everything off of that side. Also cleaned down this side as well. So I got that looking new. Uh, I just used my alcohol that I use here to clean with, 99%. Um, this is it. So uh, this in a Q-tip, and it comes right off. Dry it real good uh, with the Q-tips, and, um, and that's it. Probably just talking to the microphone when I do this. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put those other heat sinks on there. And then I'm going to start applying the uh, thermal pads to this. And we'll go from there. All right. I got it all set up. Uh, let's see. I got my thermal pads on. So that looks great. I've got the heat sinks. As you can see them on right here now. I've got those right there. So uh, I've got four of those. And the, um, the thermal pad that actually came on the bottom of those, I actually took it off and I used the thermal pads that I was using on the miner itself. So uh, hopefully that adds an extra little bit to it. Uh, you know, uh, when you're talking fractions, but you know, you throw enough on the pile and all of a sudden you've got one. So uh, it does add up in the end, in my opinion. So I've got that all set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this all up and seal it, uh, hopefully for the last time. And then we'll go ahead and try to uh, get the fans and firmware uh, upgraded. So we'll give it a shot back in a minute. All right, so everything's buttoned up. It looks great. I got the new uh, pads on there. got the new heat sinks on the uh, MOSFETs. So I am really happy with where it's at. It, um, it's as good as it can be on the inside right now. As far as the fans, I really couldn't get them to run at the speeds that I wanted them to run. Again, still having trouble with those fans. So I ditched them. I went back to the um, Infinity fans. I've got the one on top pulling the air off. I've got the one on the back pushing the air through. It only has three settings. I wish it had a fourth to go up just a little bit higher and I'd be thrilled with it. 
but it doesn't. As far as power supplies, I do have an upgraded power supply. It's 140 uh, watt power supply. It's uh, um, a better power supply than the stock one that came with it. I wouldn't have been able to overclock with the stock one. But now, 2020 hindsight, when I look back at this, I really wish I didn't buy that power supply. It was like $60, $70 for that. And from a manufacturer that I'm unfamiliar with. What I should have did is what I'm doing now. It's ordering a barrel plug on one end and a six pin on the other. It's a 12 volt wire. And that I'm gonna plug into an HP server power supply with a breakout board that I get at Parallel Miner. Um, I would highly recommend going in that direction only because it's gonna be about 40 to $50 max for the breakout board and the power supply. And I got to tell you the truth, it's 750 watts compared to 140 watts. Now, I know that I'm going to come close to maxing out that power supply up to the 20% rule. Um, and if you're not familiar with the 20% rule, that means you don't want to go within 20% of its max. So let's say you're a 100 watt power supply. You only want to use about 80 watts of that power supply. You don't want to go above that. You can, but it's not recommended. Um, and that's what I want to do. I want to keep it under there. So if I really try to overclock this uh, pretty hard, I may start crossing over into that zone where I don't want to be with the server power supply. I'd be better off. So I am going to go in that direction um, and I'm going to do that. I just ordered the wire. I have the power supplies and the breakout boards. So I just had to order the wire and I'm good to go. Uh, if you want to order from Parallel Miner, there's a link in the description below. It's an affiliate link. Definitely helps the channel. Uh, definitely check them out. They're, they're a good company and they're worth, worth taking a look at. Anyway, enough talking about that. So you got your power supply, you understand the perils of overclocking and bricking your miner or uh, uh, burning down your house. So, you know, just keep that in mind as we move forward. Let's look at the firmware that I'm using and it's R Dugan. Now, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, but R Dugan has got this one out. It will overclock where you can um, uh, manually overclock the miner. So uh, just come over here to the releases, click right here. And then you can scroll down and pick from the one that you want to use. We're using the KS0 Pro update right here. And that's because we're using the KS0 Pro. Uh, if you have a different one, you'd want to use it over here. But this overclocking guide is not going to really be for you because each one of these, as you work for the megahertz and the millivolt, they're going to be different. Like the KS0, uh, when you change millivolt, I think you have to go from 6 and then in increments of seven the rest of the way, or maybe it's seven and then increments of six, I forget. But either way, you, there is certain ways. With the KS0 Pro, you can do it in increments of two. Um, so there are different numbers that you have to work with. So just make sure you know your miner and the overclocking values you need for yours. For the KS0 Pro, uh, we know we do it in two. So this is the interface right here. You can see that I've had this running for just a little bit. Let me refresh that. It's probably about an hour now. I want to let that settle in and look at that exactly an hour. And it looks like we are settled in and we're running pretty good right now. This one is much more informative. We have the hash rate, the board temperatures. We got the chip voltage, the chip temperature. Uh, chip clocks, uh, the fan speeds. As we come down, we can see the intake is 34 before it was 36. The exhaust is 49 before it was 68. So um, it is running cooler, but then again, we are running it um, a little lighter right now. We aren't that high. So let's look at the uh, settings for overclocking. Now, the bottom two thirds of the screen are going to be blanked out and you will have to click the uh, warning um, and click OK and accept it to get into this section. As a matter of fact, when you first install this miner or this uh, firmware, you're going to have to click that you accept the fact that you're going to be overclocking and, and the warnings that come with it. Then when you come to this page, there's another warning in here and it again tells you, make sure you know what you're doing. So uh, by clicking that, you're saying that you're, you know, you're okay with it. Here's the numbers that I put in here right now to get going. Now, of course you wanna increase the millivolts because that's gonna be your power, but you wanna to try to see where you can get your miner before you have to increase your millivolt because the idea is less, less power, more money in your pocket. So, um, you know, less you spend on power. So that's more you keep. And you wanna to try to work with this. I would say that the rule of thumb for me in my minor and what I'm doing is going to be uh, about um, one millivolt for every eight megahertz I go up. Now I know I'm already at 110, which uh, means I should be, you know, um, what, 11 millivolts right now. And I'm not. And that's only because, like I said, I'm trying to find that spot. Now, from here, I will start staging it up. But I also want to 
lower that millivolt a little bit and keep checking that and see eventually when I do have a crash, because I'm not giving it enough electricity, then I'll raise that millivolt back up a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to have my miner stable. And once it's stable with the megahertz uh, overclock um, for the, um, the offset, then I want to start bringing down my millivolt just a little bit in the increments of two and see where I start to have uh, instability or instability. Uh, and then uh, maybe move it back up a little bit to find that stable point. And then that way I'm using as little power as possible. So that's really the game you're going to be playing today or that I'm playing. Uh, and here it is right here. So let's go ahead and let's put this up to 200. And if I'm putting that up to 200, um, let us bring a calculator over and I will show you that. So we are going uh, 200 divided by the eight equals 25. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this by 25 millivolts. All you do have to do is click save and that's it. You don't need to reboot the miner. This will uh, start working immediately. And then what it'll do is that it will increase in steps. So it won't just all of a sudden ramp up and then go. It's going to go up in small increments. So this could take, you know, uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Overall, I'm going to let this run for about another hour. So you can see we're at an hour and four minutes. So I'm going to come back in another hour and we're going to see where we're at and really see if we're stable. If we are, we're going to push it up a little bit further. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so we're up for almost uh, three and a half hours. Everything's looking stable. I did make a couple little changes, and that was some an error earlier that I had said uh, when I said I was going to put the miner to 25. Actually, as I mentioned, you did want to move it in increments of two. So um, I did put it at 26. Uh, I was still a little lower than what I was getting uh, before in my hash rate. So I did want to increase it. So I did put it to 28 and 2020. I am going to push that up a little bit more because I still don't think I'm going to reach it. So um, I will move that up a little bit. But really what I'm trying to do is match up to where I was before um, with T-Swift and see what my temperatures are. Now I know I did just change the thermal pads and put those heat sinks uh, uh, inside. So that will make a difference. Uh, hopefully it is, but you know, um, I am going to push this up a little bit more to try to, like I said, match up with at least the, um, the hash rate. Uh, if I look at some numbers that we have real quick, this is where I was on the right. And this is where we are now on the left. You can see the average chip temp, um, is 48 and before it was 51. So I am getting less, um, in temperature wise and then my uh in and out 34 and 34 so that's the same but um i am 62 now i was 67 so that's that's a good little jump down so it definitely is cooling uh or or less heat uh it going out the back and maybe it is radiating out more through the miner because of the new um uh, thermal pads that we put in uh, when i look at the numbers they they're getting closer it is raised a little bit more um so uh, I like to close that gap and then look at it. But after that, I'm going to go ahead and keep working on mine. I have some goals I would like to try to uh, reach with this. So I'm going to keep messing around with it. You know, just be careful uh, if this is what you're going to choose to do. Uh, like I said, you could brick it, um, you know, light your power supply on fire. So uh, <laughs> just be careful with what you're doing. Do your own research. Thanks for checking in, everybody. I appreciate y'all. I'm also subscribed to the channel buttons right over there. If you want to watch any of my other videos, I'm going to have one right up over there. I'll have links in the description for uh, any of the sites that we were using today. And uh, of course, if you want to leave any comments down below, I appreciate it. Let me know what you got for your overclocks and, um, and what you're running at, which firmware you're running for that matter as well. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.